Reinstallation is going to be brief. We're having battery on the phone issues. This track is now sitting in here. I put it right back in just like it came out. It's sitting on top of the headliner and I have set the rear glass in because that must be in there before you can bolt it up. Uh, I have also gotten under there, uh, crawled under it and uh, installed all six screws so it won't slide around. Uh, not tightly, they're just in. I started, I don't want it to slide to the back and catch under the lip of the roof when I push the track up. Here's this pin I told you about earlier. It's gonna go in this hole right here, right there. All right, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna have my impact with a 10 millimeter and I'm gonna put that right there and, and, and trap it. I'm gonna do another one down here. It will stay here long enough. It's better if you have somebody over on the other side making sure it doesn't slip out because if you notice, these are U-shaped holes and not hole holes. Um, you could put one in this one, which is a hole hole if you wanted to. Uh, then um, round hole. Uh, and I'm going to go over there and put it up on the other side. You got to make sure these pins start with these guide pins. That centers the whole thing. Once you've got both uh, bolts in both sides, go all the way around the back. Start them all. Do not tighten them. All right. Here's a pro tip that's caused me much anxiety in the past. See those two wire and harness uh, wire pigtails there? Those are for the motors. When you push that track up, it's going to try to trap them between the track and the roof. If you tighten that track down before you realize you've done that, you're going to have to take the track back loose to get them out. So when you put, when you get, every, get the bolts started, reach up in there and grab those and make sure they're not pinned up there. Same thing with the drain tube. Drain tube, see the drain hose right there? Just pull it back out. Once you, once you get everything started, pull it back out and uh, blow it out and just with your lungs, blow it out and put it back in and put it, uh, you know, install it at that point. Uh, for the front, we will be putting, once everything's sort of bolted up, we got to put that big aluminum bracket back on before we can put these bolts on up here. So that I will try to get a little more in depth on. It doesn't, it's not too big of a deal, but I'll show you. So let me get, let me get it uh, install. Uh, let me get it attached. All right, as I mentioned earlier, reinstallation, simply put, is reversing the removal process. But there are some quirks. Uh, one being this. Uh, brace all right to get this on you got to get it up over top of that you've got to make sure your satellite antenna is coming through its hole your satellite uh, wire and then once you've got it up over here you're going to get it up over there all right all right i've got it mostly up there now if you notice i pinned the uh sunroof drain on top of it i got to get that out let me do that all right i told you about these pins these generally break off of the old track when you pop this loose and they don't matter and they don't matter because uh, you don't need them they don't help hold the thing in in the least they don't do a darn thing except for uh, hold this bracket to the sunroof track when they're installing it at the factory which we're not at the factory but what they do do is while you're doing it out in the field like this is they kind of, hold on a minute, let me get this re re Okay, what they do help with is holding this piece in so you can just put the bolts in at your leisure. All right, so I have pushed this up in here and I've got them lined up. You see that bracket, you see that stud or a little uh, pin and there's a, a corresponding hole in this thing, or in this uh, bracket. So you're gonna, I'm gonna reach up here behind this track and listen to this. All right, snapped into place. You see me not holding it in? It's in there too. It's got to be bolted up, but it's in there. It's not coming out. All right. They are handy for that. But if even if you didn't have them, let's say if you were going to rebuild your track with those new parts they have available now and you broke those off, just hold it up here and tighten one of the bolts. It's not a big deal. Those things don't do a thing in the world other than hold that up there right now. And it's just, just like that little clip that used to be in here on the old track. Doesn't do a thing. I don't ever put them back in because they're just a waste of time. Uh, they're only there for the convenience of the factory. All right. So what are we going to do now? Gonna put these three 13 uh, millimeters back up here. Remember, your either your wrench or whatever, or your uh, uh, wobble socket like I have, 
and put them up in there. I'm gonna tell you, these are speed, you can clearly see these are speed nuts right here, right? That just clip into place. Sometimes they're bent up a little bit. Sometimes you gotta reach back there and push down on them. They can be a challenge to get them to start. Not always, occasionally. You want to make sure that bolt is going up there as straight as possible so it can bite into that speed nut and tighten itself down. Those go in there really tight. You can sort of see the nut, the little washer on it. Let me show it to you. You can sort of see this little washer. It's just barely, you can see, actually see it flatten out a little bit when you tighten it down. So they go in there pretty tight. Um, what else? Little maintenance things while you have it off. All right, well, you obviously you're gonna put this back into place uh, where it came from. So you pop that back into place. And then you plug that back up or you're set if it's not gonna work. All right, uh, I'll put these, you put the, blow through these, I've already done it. Just blow through these with your lungs. Make sure, you know, this little maintenance things while you have it off, blow through those. Put these three, put these three 13 millimeters in and then put that 10 millimeter in. It's got to go in after them. Now 10 millimeter there, you got three across the front. Of course, you've got all these ones we put in that I've got started, but they are not tight. Uh, blow through your rear drains. This is the time to check and make sure that your uh, wiring harnesses for your uh, wiring pigtails for your uh, motors are not trapped at the top of the track. I've already pulled mine out and plugged them in. They're plugged in and ready to rock later on. Uh, other thing, please don't forget, right there, remember that little uh, plastic uh, mounting pedestal, mounting boss thingy for the coat hook? Right now, you need to put it on because you can only put that on when the headliner's down. Uh, trust me, if you put the headliner up and you have not put that up and you got it all back together and then realize that, you will uh, be most displeased. All right. The glass is in, it's got the screws on there, but they are loose, so if you've noticed, it can move. Because I don't want it, uh, when, I, when I tighten this up, I do not want it to be caught under the back lip of the thing and maybe mess up the seal, or even mess up, work better, worse, worse yet, mess up the glass. I don't know if you can mess up the glass, but I'd rather not find out. Uh, after that, uh, once we have all these 10 millimeters in and all the 13 millimeters in, before I tighten all this stuff down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this glass to the top of its travel, front and rear, and snug it down. And I'm gonna get out on the top of the roof and look at it. Make sure that it doesn't need to be scooched backwards a little bit to make that seal touch, because it does have some wiggle room to the front, to, to go front or back and up and down. You can do the final adjustment after everything's done, but right now is the time, because if this track is a little it's got there's just a hair of wiggle room side to side if it is not perfectly centered it should mostly be but if it is not right now while you have all the bolts accessible and uh still loose if if, if like say maybe one side and the, the seal's not touching on one side and right now is the time to find that and then you can kind of shake the track side to side and uh get it lined up but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust that glass up as high as it'll go and i'm going to adjust it backwards until it touches the back surface but I don't want it jammed into the back surface I just want it touching and then it should be pretty much centered and then I'll, I'll of course since it's adjusted as high as it'll go once the sunroof is in and working I will of course have to drop it a little bit it'll be too high for a final adjustment but for right now that's where you want it that's where I want it anyway all right so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna talk to you about putting the headliner back up I'm gonna give you an opportunity to learn from my past mistakes uh, when I was talking about the track, making sure it was lined up side to side, I have, theoretically, when you line those line, alignment pins up, it should be lined up. But uh, there's a little wiggle room. And I have noticed before that I've tightened the track all the way up, and then I adjust this glass up, and there'll be a gap over here, particularly on the left side for some reason. And I have to take the track completely loose, not off, just loose, and kind of wiggle it around a little bit to kind of center in, center and orient it. So this will touch over here. Um, now I, this side is fine this time, but here's why I do this. If you'll notice, I've got this adjusted way too high. Like I told you before, I've got this adjusted to the farthest of top of its travel in the back and everything. All right, it's touching. This is what you want. This is good. Good news right here. 
but I wanted to show you this is why because sometimes you can have a gap right here because the track is just a hair to the right or the hair to the left and it won't touch on one side so what you do is you adjust this all the way up and then tighten maybe two of the bolts in the back up so it'll be up here and see if it touches just visualize it look at it or take a or do that or take a business card like a thinner business card and run it down in here and there should be some resistance just run it here if, if it just falls down in there you need to loosen the track and kind of shake it around a little bit but that's just a little tip of something that's happened to me a few times i shall continue right now we've got the track pretty much bolted up every single bolt is in it except for the big 13s on the bracket up front uh the little mounting pedestals uh you can see right there for the coat hooks that those are on uh, all the drain tubes are hooked up this is the time to do your housekeeping right here make sure all your little stuff is hooked up motors plugged up sunroof drains blow through them and plug them up because if you don't plug them up you'll have a leak you see that over there right there that's one of the magnets that has come off the headliner uh, you need to take that and pop it back into the headliner you see how it's right here on this headliner and you see how it was missing right over there I'm gonna take that off and put it back on there sometimes they pop out and stay on there because I'm telling you they're strong uh, that if, if it's there it's not holding the headliner up so you need to pop it back in its little slot in the headliner uh, that does happen um, let's see and we're gonna put the 13s in the front and let me walk around here we put the 13s in the front haven't done it yet about to do it put these 13s in once they go in now see here's the deal I already know the track is is lined up these 13s are gonna pretty much immobilize this bracket so now that I know what the tracks where it needs to be when these start I can go ahead and run them down tight when one two three is down tight then I take 10 millimeter and put that back up run it tight and do the same thing to the other side make sure your sunroof drains in here blow through it make sure your sat antenna which I already showed you is hooked up and not pinned up getting stuck at the top of the roof that sunroof drain over there 13s over there and at that point you want to go all the way around to all the rest of the 10 millimeters 10 millimeters and make sure they're tight so I'm gonna put these 13s in and I'm gonna do the 10s and I'm gonna get back with you so here we are the track is completely bolted up the brackets bolted up the airbags are bought back bolted up the sunroof drains are attached the satellite antenna is hooked up I know I've been through all this before but just in case sunroof drains motors are plugged up all right I have adjusted the back glass down to more or less uh, flush with the roof uh, I have cleaned or wiped off and lubed the seal you can see it's nice and shiny uh, I recommend I know Ford says use Crytox DuPont Crytox for this and that stuff works great but it's kind of expensive uh, I use 3M silicone paste it comes in a decent sized little container with a brush sort of and you can use it for all it's really good stuff um, but it's really good it's a little thicker body I tried getting some silicone paste at one of the big box stores one time and I don't know it was whatever brand they had it wasn't 3M though I don't think you can get it there uh, and I it was a little less thick than I liked this stuff's perfect and it lasts a long time and it's good for the rubber because it's silicone you don't want to use a petroleum product on this rubber so any kind of lube that has petroleum in it you wouldn't want to use and WD-40 is worthless because it's going to evaporate I mean it, it would lube it in, in the short run I, the, uh, one other good thing it's not too bad is if you get some of that uh, I believe it was liquid wrench uh, silicone spray with ceramic Teflon which they call Surflon and soak you a little paper towel with that and wipe it down after you've cleaned it and then let it dry while it's up like this that stuff works pretty good now I can't vouch I don't think it'll last as long as this heavier bodied stuff but it'll definitely lube one up but uh, mainly silicone paste so that's lubed this glass is still loose it's still loose it's not tightened down I'm gonna I'm going to perform the initialization with it loose uh, because I have the other one in place all right so the next step is we have to put the headliner back up so yeah we're gonna pretty much reverse our process so what I recommend doing is get help for about the umpteenth time 
what you're gonna do is let me crawl in here uh you are going to put this side uh you can do whatever side you want to uh, this is i just happen to be in oof, i happen to be in here on the passenger side and uh you know just put it up there um all right it's up there right all right let's go around once again, I recommend you get help, but if you aren't going to get help, don't definitely don't be trying to do it and film with one hand. Uh, I'm a professional, folks. Don't try this part at home. All right, left rear corner is in. You can start with the right rear corner. There's no reason I started with the left rear corner other than the fact that I was standing at the right side. Uh, so you can do it one of two ways. You could bend that head toner in the middle and pop that other side up over the C pillar. If you have chosen to take those C-pillars down, I suggest you put both those sides up over the C-pillar and then connect those two clips. That would be the absolute easiest way to do it. All right, I haven't done this and I'm giving you another workaround. This isn't the way I normally do it, but I'm gonna do it this way for you. All right, so I got that side up and I'm gonna put this side up over here. All right, if you can see, it just pops right up over there. All right, and all right, it's caught. All right, so. That side's up, that side's up. Let me go around the other side. Actually, before I go to the other side of the headliner, if you'll notice, this is still outside the A-pillar. Now, one thing you could do, again, if you don't want to do like I do and manipulate the headliner, pop this off on both sides. Pop this off. Be careful, because it's got a little, uh, little attachment piece in there that's pretty uh, flimsy. There's 10 millimeter right there, and there's one down here. Take the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeters out, yank this off and lay it to the side and put this up over top of it. And you can also do this for removal. When you're done, you pop it back in there and put your 10 millimeters on there, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend down on this a little bit and I'm gonna put this up here. So give me just a second. There it is. All right, all three sides on, on. Next side. Okay, so here's where we have to get a little flexy with the headliner. Yeah, again, if you have that C-pillar taken loose, this is a piece of cake. Uh, I'm going to bend down right here, and I'm going to push up right there, and I'm going to tuck that right up over top of that headliner. And I'm going to do the same thing right here with this B-pillar, and I'm going to do the same right thing right there with the A-pillar. Again, you don't have to do it my way. If you want to just do it uh, the quote-unquote correct way, then take all these pillars off or at least take one side off. I don't think you need to take all six of them off. I think you just take one side and you can get it off and then tuck these back up. But this is the way I'm gonna do it. And I'll be right back. Headliner is up. Remember those back bounding boss clips in the very back that I re reached up in the headliner and pulled down with my hand? Uh, when you get those lined up, be sure you make hear them click into place. The headliner will sort of have a hump in it at right there above the window on either side if you don't have them in place uh, but once they are in place they kind of center the rest of the headliner so that works out pretty good now make sure that these edges are pushed up over top of the rubber you can pull the rubber down and then reinstall the rubber too that works most of the time just doing it like that works go all the way around make sure that's right make sure your wires are hanging down they are all right Next thing, make sure you're gonna plug these back up. Make sure you're gonna plug those two things back up. Um, and then once they're plugged up, you wanna put this back on here. And it literally, you can see that's got a little bit of an indentation right there. It fits right into that. Fits right into this. And um, you know, it fits right in like an interlocking piece. And then the, these little clips here, these little, uh, aluminum clips just kind of grab the headliner and it's just really just a light press fit then we're going to reinstall our uh, visors we're going to reinstall our coat hooks with the torx 20s um hopefully you remember to put their little mounting pedestals back up like i've warned you about a couple times these are your tor your uh, number uh seven millimeters and at that point we are going to initialize or program it. And I know I have a video for that, but I'm gonna show you how it works when you have a fresh sunroof. So I'll be right back. I decided maybe I should film this. Uh, I know my son helps me a lot and he has a fit with these things. You see that hooked piece? 
you tilt it up and it basically hooks in. So I fed the wire up in there already, right? And so I'm gonna tilt it this way and then just hook it, right? It's hooked in there. So, it, oh shoot, there you go. It's hooked in there. But what you do is put the visor up and then it holds it in place, the, just the weight of it, because it literally is rotated into place, just like this. So the weight of the visor is holding it in place, so it's, it's ready to go for you to just put your seven millimeter in. There's your little tip. All right, everything is in. The only thing left to do is program slash initialize it. And once that's done, and assuming it worked, this brand new track works satisfactorily, satisfactorily, uh, uh, I don't think that's even a word. Um, do a final adjustment on the glass and reinstall the concertina, AKA the accordion things, which you can't do until you've done the final adjustments. Uh, so I have a video on installing those. I probably won't bother filming that. But let's have an adventure together, all right? Uh, these things are a little funky. They're not just like initializing when you put a motor in or something. Uh, sometimes they're a little funny. So if you recall from the first video, before I did anything to this truck, I vented the glass. I ran the shade all the way back and I vented the glass. So that shade motor still thinks it's vented. And it is vented. All right, I had a pause there. Let's have an adventure. Since I've told you about where we had the sunroof track and everything. Um, the difference is these things are jammed all the way as far as it forward as they would go. Tilt is usually right about here, just before this this kind of teardrop looking hole there. That's usually as far as it'll go. The only time it'll ever jam it all the way to the end of the stop there is when it programs. And the same thing when it goes to the back. It, the only time it'll go ever go as far back as it'll go is when it's programming. And after that, it runs on a timer and it stops just short of that. So, sometimes it's a little bit funky when you program it. So let's try it and see. I'm gonna shut the door. We gotta wait till these lights go off. I'm sure if you've seen my video. One, one, two, three, four, one. Double tap. And you heard it start to try to move. Now, it may or may not go into programming mode right here. I'm gonna wait a few seconds. Sometimes you have to let it do that one little bump it's got and then start the process over. And sometimes it'll go ahead and go. I don't want anybody to get stressed out if they're doing this job and it might, it won't program. It will. All right, I'm thinking it's not gonna go. All right, so we're gonna just shut it off, open the door, do it again. Not a big deal. All right, lights go off. One, one, two, three, four. Oh, poo, I just messed it up. All right, let's try it again. Live action here. All right, here we go. When it goes out. One, one, two, three, four, one. Double tap. All right, let's see if it goes this time. Usually about 15 seconds and I was not counting. So I'm guessing. Sometimes I didn't double tap it fast enough. Doesn't sound like it's gonna go. All right, it's shut. All right, that's what you want it to do. All right, now they are not perfect. It's not supposed to do that, right? But it did. Okay, so this is cool. So now we're gonna program it again. And uh, see, that didn't work. So what we're gonna do is start it. And you gotta get it to where it want, to the position it wants to be. Okay, well, one, one, two, three, four. One, double tap. Now it didn't do anything, so I can about guarantee it's gonna work now and because it didn't do any bumping. Whenever it bumps, when you first touch the switch, it's probably not gonna program and you need to, there you go, jammed. Here comes the shade. Everything working pretty good so far. See, if it tries to move when you first touch it, it's probably not gonna go into programming mode. That's why I did that live. It, not try to make myself look like an idiot, but to try to show you that it wants to get to the position it wants to be in and then it's gonna program when it's good and ready. And they're not all the same. All right, it goes all the way back when it's back. We let off the button, push the button again. And there it goes. 
working nice and smooth. This is the first time this sunroof track's ever uh, opened itself. All right, and here comes the shade. And we are fixing to be done. Boom, all right, one touch vent. All right, that should go back halfway and it should vent. And it did, and if you noticed, it does not go all the way to the end of that hole, like it, like where I left it when I manually put it that way. But if you'll notice, see where that one is in relation to the hole. It's basically about that little round thing's worth right by the hole, by the hole, right? Look where the other one is. Same. That means they're lined up, they're in sync, they're in time, whatever you wanna call it. One touch down, one touch back. All right, I'm not going all the way back because obviously it'll go all the way back. One touch forward, we're good to go. It is shut, one touch the shade. All right, this sunroof is fixed. Um, what do I have left to do? I need to adjust this glass properly. Uh, one thing I'm gonna tell you about adjusting these glasses, when you have either put the replacement arms, just the upper arms or a whole track, what I have found is there must be a little bit difference in the manufacturing tolerances because the original stuff, you can usually adjust that glass up higher than it needs to be. So you have some extra room, right? With these new ones, most of the time, and particularly on the left side, I don't know why that is, and there must be some difference in the machinery that makes these, something's a little off, but most of the time I have to adjust these things up just as far as they will go just to get them even mo remotely right. Sometimes I might back the back down a little bit, but the fronts just about always have to be jammed up to the top. And really sometimes they could even go, could stand to go a little higher, but there's just no more adjustment. So your mileage may vary with that, uh, but I am finding that to be the case uh, nearly across the board. Uh, sometimes you'll get one that might go a little higher than it needs to, and you can not put it to the limit of its travel. But most of these, I'm having to just, I start them off really by default now. I just adjust them all the way up to as far as they'll go. And if one little corner is just a hair high, I'll back it down a little bit. But I have an adjustment video also. But basically, you want the rear to be more or less flush with the roof. And then you want the front glass well, you want to be at, have it to be flush with the roof in the front, but where it meets the rear glass, you want to have it sitting after you open it and close it like this, not from tilt, from, from open open. Then you're going to want to adjust it to where it sits just a hair higher than the back glass because there is some wiggle room in this mechanism here. And if you adjust it dead even, then when you come from here, it's going to be low. Uh, so started off with a little high high slightly high is better than slightly low especially when you're dealing with an older truck with older seals on it they usually need to be go up a little bit anyway so anyway there we are i'll do a little final wrap up when i finish the adjustment another little quick tip of the trade here do you see the difference between these two glass screws or bolts there is a difference they're the same screw but there's a difference between them they're literally the exact same screw all right, if you'll notice, the washer on that one has gotten slightly concave. This one's still flat. You can see it's still flat. All right, but you can kind of see that one, even from right at this angle, you can see it's bent, right? It's, it's clear. I can see it on my phone, so I know that's going to show up. This thing is bent. All right, yeah, you, you can really see it right there. All right, so what that's going to do is... It goes in those holes, right? Yeah, it goes right in that hole. So what it's going to want to do is when you're trying to put it all the way up at like right, maybe right there, that concave part is going to try to center itself in that hole and it's going to push it, pull it back down. And it's not going to let you adjust it to where you want to adjust it. Well, what do you do for that? Well, you know, I carry extra screws so I can replace it. However, you don't have to do that because here's the deal the front one didn't do that so the front one's flat this one's flat this one's concave so here's my solution put this one on the end which controls the adjustment put the one that's concave in the middle where it doesn't matter really because once you have that one tight and that one tight 
this one's just extra security. You can put the concave one right there and it's not gonna pull it down. It's not gonna affect your adjustment. So just swap them. Uh, so there's another little, uh, that's, I've run into that a bunch of times. That's one, sometimes I'll, that, what that is is where somebody's messed with this thing before and tighten it down with, you know, incredible Hulk pressure there and uh, concave that thing. And uh, you know, there's not really any fixing with it. You know, if, if I had three or four of them, I have extras and I can obviously replace them but you probably aren't gonna have those. So just, you know, make sure you have two that are flat and put them on the ends, put it on the ends and then put the concave one in the middle. All right, there's another little tip of the thing I've learned out of the way, along the way. All right, so there she is. As I told you, this is adjusted as far up as it'll go and it's still a hair low. I don't like that. There's not much you can do about it. I don't like that. I uh, wish it would adjust up a little higher, but it, it'll hold. It just, I would prefer it to be a little higher. As you can see, this looks worse than it is. This is barely above this one, right? All right, but when you come from open, it'll be lower than this. When you come from up here, it'll be about right here. So this is about where you want it. Um, pretty much even all the way around. Uh, and it works, you saw it work. And I hope when I review all this footage, that all this came out and it is helpful uh this took me about four times as long as it uh you normally does when i'm not filming and talking so i hope it uh it's not as comprehensive as i would have loved i would have loved to have delved in a little bit more of how to put that shade on and all that but this should pretty much get anybody who's even a little bit mechanically inclined give them enough confidence to take a crack at this so again reasons why you might do this you might be replacing your entire sunroof track because yours is broken this is this is this it got everything you need right here you may be rebuilding your sunroof track you needed to take it off disassemble it basically and remanufacture it and put it back in well this has got everything you need except for the rebuilding the track part, which I'm going to hopefully have a video on that before too long because I'm about to tackle one of those uh, pretty soon. Uh, but this will, I've had a lot of people asking me for these videos uh, of how to take it out and put it in. And I'm going to make it three different videos. And this is going to be the third one, I think. Uh, one for removing and one for uh, transferring the parts over to the track and one for um, putting it back in. And if you got any questions, if I didn't cover something, maybe uh, my hand was in the way, who knows, uh, let me know and I will uh, clarify whatever needs to be done. Everything's bolted back up, everything works, everything's plugged in, the sunroof works great, it doesn't make any noises, uh, and uh, this person has a working vehicle again, and I will tell you, they updated the guts of this sunroof track definitely in 19 possibly late 18 i haven't uh pinned down an actual date but i can tell you for a fact they updated the the upper arms which i have a video on how to replace just those if that's all you have broken they updated those in for sure in fall of 19. i know for a fact just about exactly when that happened i've never seen a set of those new arms break all right the new tracks come with those new arms in them but the lower guides on the 15, 16, 17, and 18s still break because they have the old style. Somewhere in either late 18 or early 19, they updated those. And I've yet to see a set of those break. I hope too soon because I'd like to keep doing these. Uh, but um, they're definitely, if they are going to break, they're certainly not breaking in the time frame as the other ones did. The other ones were breaking right from the get-go. So they've definitely been improved. So this particular track here was about... Uh, 1900 and some change at the dealership uh, it was I'll put the part number down in the description uh, this this track right here will fit from an 18 down to a 15 for 100% sure it will fit 18 down to a 15 as long as you have the same deflector as this track does this will fit your truck somewhere right around in there I want to say mid to late 18 they changed to the deflector and if you have the different deflector this track will not work but that's only if you have the different deflector. Uh, so the, for the vast majority of the trucks that are gonna be doing the failing, this will be the track you need. And I'll put the part number down in the description. 
uh, and I've probably yacked long enough. I hope this helps. I hope this answers a lot of the questions that I keep getting. Uh, I've had people email me, uh, message me, ask me questions on the videos, and I, I've been promising this video, and I really hope it comes out. I do have a couple of failed attempts that I was not happy with, and I may be able to splice some footage in there if I'm not happy with this one, but hopefully I'm going to have a comprehensive uh, stuff here, and uh, it's been a long time coming, but hopefully it helps. Questions, comments, I appreciate everybody watching, appreciate all the questions, appreciate the support. Uh, it's not like I'm some big, massive YouTube channel. I'm a small one, but you know, every little bit helps. And uh, leave me a like or a whatever and uh, comment and all that stuff. And uh, I'll uh, answer you when I see it. Have a great day.